Okay, we're going to match the Intel B580 against the RX 6700 XT and the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. For our benchmarks, we're going to run the Intel B580 on these multiplayer games. And I know some of you guys will say that you don't really play these games. Here's the deal. There's a lot of people playing these games right now. So, and if you own one of these GPUs, upgrading later on will be easier if you pick the right one. Gamers who are playing these multiplayer titles are always on the lookout for the card that gives them the best performance. And the more demand there is, the easier it is to sell your GPU. All right, in this video, you'll get a first-hand look at actual performance of the Intel P580. We're also going to compare it against the RX 6700 XT and the RTX 3060. Look at some overclocking, and we'll also discuss some of the issues with the Intel Battle Mage card. Yes, there are a few issues, and I think it's important for you to know before you commit on buying these cards. As always, all specs and testing methodology is found here. Let's kick things off with some 1080p gameplay. In Warzone at native 1080p, the performance is solid. You'll be seeing around 130 FPS with lows in the hundreds. There are some micro status in the frame time chat, but they're pretty minor and don't disrupt the experience overall. This one's pretty stable and it's a good experience. For Apex Legends, the performance is mostly stable, but there are occasional status. It's not as consistent as what we'd like, especially when compared to the other cards we previously tested. However, you'll still get that really high FPS when the action's a bit light. The lows can drop significantly once things start to heat up though. In Fortnite's performance mode, it takes a little while to stabilize. I had to complete a full game before the status completely cleared up. Once it stabilizes though, you're looking at around 400 plus FPS with lows in the 200s. Plus the power consumption is only around 110 watts. It's not bad at all, assuming you can wait for it to spool up. Valorant is a very stable experience. With other cards we've tested, it takes about a couple of rounds to achieve solid frame pacing, but with the B580, it's stable right after the first round. You'll get high FPS here, but that's mostly thanks to our CPU pushing this scenario. In PUBG with 1080p DX11 Enhanced API, performance is decent. You'll get around 160 plus FPS depending on the scene. There are some occasional status but this is more due to PUBG's engine or server-side issues rather than the GPU itself. Overall, there's no major complaints, though you might hit a ball deck with the B580 in certain scenes. In Helldivers 2, we're dealing with invasion from the Illuminati, and we must respond. The performance is decent. Running on medium settings, you'll get around 70 plus FPS. Yes, you can lower the settings for better frame rates, but even at this setting, it's very playable. The B580 does create a little bit of bottleneck here, but it's still fine. Arena Breakout Infinite performs poorly on the Battle Mage card. You'll notice micro status in this game, like really obvious micro status. While the raw FPS is high, the frame pacing is very poor making it less enjoyable to play. Moving on to newer titles, Delta Force, which just released recently, runs quite well on the B580. You'll see close to 200 FPS with decent lows. The B580 does act as a bottleneck, but overall, your gaming experience is good. Finally, we have Battle of XL2, which runs pretty good with the B580. We're using the Vulcan API here as DX12 has been a bit unstable. The game's fairly new and they're still trying to iron out a lot of issues. Once things stabilize, we'll switch to DX12 for our testings. But for now, the B580 gives you around 80 FPS in heavier scenes with acceptable lows as well. Now let's see how the B580 performs when we scale up to 1440p resolution. In Warzone, we're using Intel's XCS is upscaling and the experience is definitely smoother at 1440p compared to the native 1080p. XCS is helps a lot in improving overall performance, giving you a better experience in this resolution. In Apex Legends, you do feel the impact of the jump from 1080p to 1440p, especially in the more demanding scenes. On statics areas, the difference isn't as noticeable, but the heavier scenes make it more evident. Fortnite's performance mode shows a slight drop in raw FPS at 1440p, but the lows remain quite consistent between the two resolutions, even though the GPU is bottlenecked in both cases. 
With Valorant, the B580 gets bottleneck harder at 4040p and you'll notice lower frame rates with some drops in the lows as well. Let's say the difference isn't as huge even in more action-oriented scenes. And PUBG thinks take a noticeable hit with a drop of around 100 plus FPS when scaling to 1440p. However, 200 FPS is still quite high and you'll appreciate the visibility advantage of this resolution. What stands out with the B580 is the stability it maintains, something we'll compare later on against the 3060 and the RX 6700 XT. For Helldivers 2, we've used upscaling and set the render scale to ultra quality. The difference between the upscaled and the native 1080p isn't huge. Performance is still quite close, although native 1080p still gives you that slightly better results. In Pad of XL2, we use FSR upscaling at 1440p since XCSS isn't supported in the Vulkan API. The experience here is fairly similar in terms of lows, although the raw FPS is better at native 1080p. We're still fine-tuning our settings for this game and once it becomes more stable, we'll definitely switch back to TX12 and get you better test results. Now let's compare the B580 against the RTX 3060 and the RX 6700 XT at 1440p to create a more GPU balanced scenario. The ARC B580 holds its own quite well in Warzone, while its FPS doesn't quite match the RX 6700 XT, the lows are very close, offering better stability overall. One key factor here is power consumption. Look at that. The B580 uses less than 100 watts compared to 135 watts for the RTX 3060 and 160 watts for the 6700 XT. In Apex Legions, the battle mage god is right in the middle of the pack. In heavier scenes, the B580 shows better stability compared to this lower RTX 3060 and even holds up very well against the RX 6700 XT. Fortnite is an interesting case. The RX 6700 XT takes the FPS lead, but the lows on the B580 aren't too far behind. In some instances, they're actually bitter. Looking at the numbers, Intel is showing solid potential here, although the spool up time for optimal performance in a battle royale setting can be a bit of a trade-off with the P580. As always, in Valorant, all cards are pulling really high FPS. The RTX 3060 has the most consistent performance, while the RX 6700 XT does bitter and heavy scenes but struggles a bit at the start of the benchmark the b580 sits comfortably in the three in pubg the b580 excels in stability look at the lows between old cards the b580 outperforms nvidia and the amd cards here showing its dominance and stability even though it doesn't lead in raw fps stability wise this card could be considered the better choice of course pubg's servers can introduce some interesting variables on your actual gameplay but overall the b580 holds its ground for helldivers 2 the rx 6700 xt relies on brute force and it also hit in raw performance the b580 comes close but can't quite match the performance of the radiant card here finally in part of xl2 the performance of the three cards is pretty close as mentioned earlier this is likely due to frame targeting. We're still fine-tuning the settings for this game, but overall, the experience across all three cards is very similar. When it comes to overclocking, you can access the settings through the tuning tab in the Intel driver. To start, we increase the clock speed by 150 MHz and tested it in PUBG since this game scales very well in terms of GPU performance. Here's where things get interesting. While we did achieve the 150 MHz clock speed boost, the performance didn't quite match the expectation. Despite the overclock, the utilization dropped to around 90%, while the stock settings were pushing maximum utilization. So, naturally, we bumped the resolution to 1440p and added a 20% power allowance for the GPU, and that's when we started to see the real benefits of that ran slightly hotter and consumed more power naturally but we saw a tangible boost in raw fps i also experimented with 200 megahertz overclock but this one was a bit odd the performance actually regressed with utilization dropping i also tried pushing it further with 250 megahertz and even 300 megahertz overclock but neither of those yielded any improvements 
just ended up crashing so it seems that the 150 megahertz overclock is the sweet spot for the b580 limited edition now let's talk about some issues with this card because i think it's important for potential buyers to know and until if you're watching please fix these issues the first issue is a minor one but it's still annoying like this is driver updates for some reason the driver keeps telling me that there's a new update but when i go download it it's just the same driver version which is Bruh. a bit frustrating to say the least next up is scaling now normally i enable gpu scaling on all my cards because it offers the better quality compared to default settings this is especially useful if you're using a 1440p monitor but prefer to play in a 1080p resolution however with intel's driver when i try to enable this the system just crashes you can't click on anything the only way to fix this is by going through the task manager and closing the app it's pretty buggy the third issue is with adaptive sync while this feature is enabled by default in intel's driver there are games where it simply doesn't work i can see the screen tearing on my 480 hertz monitor which is really disappointing and the last issue is more of a niche problem but still worth mentioning and this is with regards to capturing in-game footage now i use a second pc to capture the footage for our benchmarks with and with the b580 there are times when you'll experience some random flickering or even worse screen splitting and i don't run into this issue with amd or nvidia cards only with the b580 which is a bit annoying so if you're okay with those issues the b580 is a solid contender for the entry level segment i'm hopeful that intel will continue to improve their drivers fix the issues that we've mentioned here and expand their game support the b5a definitely has its strengths and you can see that it has a lot of potential intel seems to be targeting games with high player counts like fortnite and warzone which i think is a very smart move and it's really good i'll be doing more tests with the b580 so stay tuned but for now i want to hear from you what do you think of this card and after seeing all the real world benchmarks would you be purchasing one